Do you have a dirty little secret? Welcome to the club. And you're all invited. The first rule of the Dirty Little Secrets Club is tell everyone about the Dirty Little Secrets Club. We're handed out memberships free of charge. Step up to the VIP line and let Dana and Brimstone take you on a weekly ride of secrets and debauchery. Now buckle up, Buttercup, because things are about to get heated on the Dirty Little Secrets Club. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Dirty Little Secrets Club. I'm Dana Pereira. And this is Brimstone. Brim, happy two-year anniversary. Wait, wait. Today's our two-year anniversary? <laughs> really? You didn't even tell me that when we were off air. You little minx you. Like, how dare you? Two no, years. Got- two years. Wow. Yeah. Aw, day. I love you. <laughs> I'm so glad. Well, we're at 104 Aww. episodes. If I'm doing the maths correctly, that is... It's two years of us oh, getting some dirty-ass little secrets. I'm going to cry. That's so crazy. <laughs> I can't believe you didn't even say it. I wasn't even thinking about it. We were talking about so much, so many other things prior to the show. I'm just, and then you just dropped that bomb on me. I'm like, what? Like, yay. That's what we do here. That's what we, I was keeping it a secret. <laughs> That's what we do. That's, That's what we do. the theme of our show. <laughs> Meanwhile, meanwhile, I'm sitting here getting all jealous and everything. I'm like, you know, somebody's doing a little unbatting over there. You want to tell everybody about your new show? I would love to. Um, I needed something to equal out the Dirty Little Secrets Club because here we get all of that <laughs> nasty shit. And at unbatting, it's more about um, like dismantling conditioning and it's very heartfelt and real and vulnerable conversations and really trying to unbad some of the things that we've learned so that we can step into a better version of ourselves. And I just dropped the first episode today. I do it with my sister, Jessica. Um, And Jessica and I didn't talk for four years. We had- I didn't know that. Yeah, we had a bit of a, I don't want to call it a falling out. It was more like we hit a wall and we needed a break and we took a break from each other and unbeknownst to both of us, we were both on similar spiritual journeys. And whenever we came back and were able to um, really work on our relationship together, unbatting was born out of that. And I'm really, really excited about it. So I'm well, excited for you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm excited for you. I was like, well, look, we could tell everybody. I, I remembered I was like, I saw and I go, oh, I am so jealous who are you cheating on me with? <laughs> I'm like, are you you're cheating on me? How dare you? And you're like, no, Brim, it's my sister. Yep. I've heard it all before, Dana. <laughs> <laughs> you can't cheat with your sister. I mean, oh, you well, could, but that'd be gross. I mean, you could. It would be really gross. <laughs> it would be really gross. But um, I I mean, look, it is what it is. Hold on, I'm I'm doing a little bit of Snapchatting, uh, oh. so I have to fil- I have to filter on us. It's the pretty filter, so you know, hopefully, hopefully the that that comes out nice. Did I'm it gonna, look pretty? Gonna... Did it work? You look pretty. Thanks. <laughs> you look pretty. I look like a jackass, but you look pretty. Look, there you go. Uh, oh, so those of you me. who oh. want to see it, you can. Oh. You guys can. You guys can watch that on uh, the on video Snappity version of chat. this. Well, no, I'm, yes, on Snapchat, oh. but also on the video version, virgin, the video <laughs> version of this show. Um, what do you call it? Which would be uh, fantastic because you know you guys listen to us. However, if you not if you're not watching us, you miss all the hilarity that is Dana and Brim uh, live. So I suggest you check us out on YouTube and uh, you know just watch for the facial expressions alone. I mean, it's worth it. I was going to say those facial expressions that we get on there sometimes are gold. I <laughs> laugh so hard when I'm editing the show because I'm like, oh, my God. I always take snapshots of our faces because we're like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's so hilarious. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, So, yeah. So everybody, make sure you tune into Unbatting. What do you call it? Uh, you know, Dana's incredibly here. She's incredible on Trophy Wives. Well, now she's going to be incredible on on batting. So make sure you check that out. Um, and where is it? All the regular, you know, places? all of the places, all the podcast platforms and also on YouTube. So you can see my <laughs> dumb face there as well. Oh, stop. When's the next comedy gig? You have one of those coming up, too, right? 
I I don't have a comedy gig coming up. What I am doing though is I am emceeing a charity event. So somebody had asked me to do that, and I was like, "Well, here we go. <laughs> Let's do it." <laughs> <laughs> now the question is: Are you going to be the uh, Dirty Little Secrets Club Dana, or are you going to be the Unbatting Dana? <laughs> I, I think I'm probably ha- going to have to like skirt the line of both of them. Um, it is an adults only event. However, it's also for an elementary school. So, <laughs> oh, oh, you're in, they're in trouble. I should say. Yeah. I was gonna say you're in trouble, but they're in trouble. I Man, I asked them whenever they asked me to do it. I was like, "Are you sure you want me to do it?" Like I say, "Fuck a lot." <laughs> <laughs> you know, I fudge and say fudge all the time. I mean, just <laughs> just so you're aware, those fudging guys over there—they drive me nuts. Um, wow. Okay, fair enough. I, listen, I think that they have chosen a wonderful, wonderful host for their event. And Thank I am you. excited. I'm excited for you. Um, for those of you who are in the Long Island area um, or in the New York area, this coming weekend, I'll be signing over at Cradle Con uh, at the uh, Cradle of Aviation in um, on Long Island. So if you want to do that, it's on the Saturday and Sunday, the 20th and the 21st. Ooh. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. And then my son is graduating from from college this week, what do you call Yay. it? So super excited about that. So yeah, um, he's 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 graduating, and then I'm shipping him off to uh, North Carolina for a few days because he's meeting up with his mentor for uh, the barbecue show. So yeah. and then we go back we go back for the finals at the end of this month. So, so it's exciting. craziness. Craziness. We have a bunch of really great, um, you know, little things here um, sent in from you listeners out there, and we appreciate it. Uh, keep sending them in, and uh, you know, make make Dana have to sift through them. Yeah. And, <laughs> <laughs> and some of y'all are nasty out there. Okay, some of the stuff that I have to sift through, I'm like, I am not putting that on the show. <laughs> some of them are some of them are pretty pretty bad. Um, but listen, I, I, you know what's funny is is if you don't hear. You don't hear anything, um, anything in terms of um, your dirty little secret on air. It doesn't mean we're not going to get to it. it. Just means we have to scatter them out because sometimes if things are too mm-hmm. similar, we we don't put them on. You know, consecutively, we'll you Correct. know switch them up a little bit. So just you know, stay tuned, keep listening, and uh, you know, and if there's anything illegal that you're sending us, we're definitely not going to be reading it. No. Um, and we've gotten some of those too, ladies and gentlemen. So and, you know, and sending in stuff saying that you want to eat my asshole isn't a dirty little secret. So, <laughs> I, you really, you didn't tell me about that. But people send in shit like that every week. It's it's something else about something sexual that people would like to do to us. So I'm like, that's, that's not a dirty little secret. <laughs> to us, I yeah. thought it's to you. To me too. They don't yeah. want me to do no. Grim, you get your fair share of people wanting to lick your asshole, so. No, nobody wants to lick my asshole. Are you kidding me? My dog doesn't even want to lick my asshole, and he licks everything. Have you asked your dog to lick your asshole? <laughs> <laughs> I will neither confirm nor deny that I've ever done that. Deny um, that for sure. I will deny, deny that, that for sure. I will deny that. <laughs> And it certainly should be denied because it's never happened. Oh, yeah. um, although, look, you know, to to his dismay, because he'd enjoy licking it anyway. Going, uh-huh. Crazy. These dogs. I, I don't. What, what do dogs think? What are they thinking? They sniffing up in places. It's like you could be rank as sin, and they're all of them <laughs> smelling up there. It's like they you, love it. You, you try to kill yourself. Like, what's wrong with you? I, right? I don't know. There's something about like they even go out there and like eat their own turds. So, you know, they're just they're they're a different breed. Things that we think are gross. They're like, this is amazing. I don't know what you're talking about. It's insane. I I cleaned last week. I was in the house. I, I said I wasn't going to talk about it. Anyway, <laughs> talk about more. But well, we'll talk. Anyway, so I cleaned last week. I did I did the kitchen, the living room and the dining room. I did it all myself while, you know, they were doing other things. And and I was like, I'm going to get stuff done because I have been going crazy. It's been busy. Things mm-hmm. are a little sloppy. I don't like that. You know, and I, so I was in there cleaned out my, you know, in, in the studio, like everything was clean here. So then I was like, all right, I'm going to do it at home. So I started doing it and um, I got it. So I didn't shower that morning because I knew I was just going to be sitting and getting sloppy. Right. And what do you call it? And by the time I was done, my you i did that i did you know brimstone crap i did this that and then I, you name it i did it i got i, I accomplished a lot he was busy. i 
smelled like shit on a pancake in the middle of the sun. It's been sitting there for three weeks, rotting and festering. Oh you God. name it, it was absolutely disgusting. Think of all the disgusting you could possibly think of, the worst things in the world, and that's what I smelled like. And the dog was still shoving his foot the freaking nose right up my crotch, right in my rear end. I'm like, are you, yeah. Jasper, what's wrong with you? Sounds you about right. I mean? Like, Sounds seriously? Sounds about right. Yep. Like, oh, it was so, it was gross. Yep. Gross. I could, everything was just janky and stanky, and I couldn't handle it. I, for, for myself, I said, and I said, I, I went into the shower. I go, Danielle was trying to give me a hug and kiss me, and like, you know, thank you for cleaning or whatever. I was, I was like, no. I said, you're going to have to wait. Wait till I get out. <laughs> I'm going, and she just comes up to me and I said, no, no, no. I said, you want to stand in there while I'm getting in the shower? Go ahead. You can stand there and wait. I said, but I'm going in the shower right now. Dana. This is gr- this is gonna be gross. This is a dirty okay, little secret. This is gross. I'm ready for it. Really freaking dirty. I washed three or four freaking times down there, and it still smelled <laughs> because I was so freaking like there were layers, layers of stank. I had to get off. That's how much I was working. I'm telling you, it was it was awful. I was I was it was. So I wouldn't. I didn't want anybody to have to to handle that. I was like, we have to power anyway. wash your balls. <laughs> I did, I did. I swear to God, I I almost. I, thankfully, I got it off. I thought I was gonna have to grab out what do you call it, Haley's uh, little teeth thing. Was that water <laughs> spray? The little, you know, what I'm talking the water, water spray. Pick? Water pick, yeah, <laughs> water pick. I thought I was gonna have to water pick my nutsack, and it was. <laughs> I it was it was very close. It was close to getting there. I was concerned. I was very concerned. I was concerned for for my own health. I was like, holy shit. Nobody should smell this bad. Well, I'm glad that it worked out and that you uh, that you're back to being (laughs) so fresh and so clean. Also, I have another question for you. Is it is it normal for women? And I don't know. I don't know. Answer me this. Sure. Is it normal for women to be like, you know, like going snorting up their man's armpits to even if, if you're if you're like no they smell it smells bad oh let me smell them do you do that do you uh, do that i personally do not do that because okay. i don't want anything to do with that like you know how some people will be like oh my god this tastes awful here taste this and you're like what the fuck why are you gonna make me taste or this smells terrible smell this i'm like no i'm good i believe you <laughs> I, don't, right. I don't need to figure it out for myself right however i do know a lot of my girlfriend's Will sniff their man's armpits. I don't get it. I don't get it. Like I'm, I'm sitting on the couch and I, I have my arm around you know. So she comes up there and she shoves her nose in my armpits. I'm like, what the hell's wrong with you? What are you doing? I said, I stink right now. I'm just, just like, it's like I don't smell anything. I'm like, well, then you got the wrong spot there, sweetheart. Some because be, hey, be be happy you got a wife that doesn't give a shit, right? <laughs> what if she was like, oh my god, you smell. Get away from me. She does normally. That's oh. what I'm saying. No, not all. No, she did. Not. not That's what I would do to my husband. I'd be like, "Uh, you need to go shower before you can be in my presence, please." <laughs> not, <laughs> not recently. I'm. I, but I, I mean, look. I'm just. I'm just saying. It's a little crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> a little crazy. So anyway, crazy. um, should we get started on this? I think we should. We have some good <laughs> ones today, and you are up with the first one. Oh, yay. I get to talk more. Wonderful. Um, Let's see. All right. So the first writer says, when I was pledging a fraternity, one of the guys I was pledging with was so wasted that he completely passed out. I was trying to be cool. So I took a razor and shaved off his eyebrows. He woke up the next day and cried and never came back. I still feel like an ass because of that. Wow, you should feel like an ass because of that. That's messed up, man. And that if I would have messed up, if that would have happened to me, I would have found you and I would have beat your ass so bad and shaved off every hair on your body. That would have been I would have beat your ass so bad that you wouldn't you wouldn't have been able to walk. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm not judging you. I'm just saying if that was me, you would have been in big trouble, mister. <laughs> You would have been in big trouble, mister. Yeah, mister. <laughs> there you go. You did. You do a better baby voice than I do. <laughs> so it blows my mind because this happens a lot with the male gender in particular, I feel like, where their practical jokes are just really, really cruel things. Like, 
Why do we have to do something <laughs> cruel to somebody to feel cool to our friends? I, I, I am assuming alcohol played a role in this. If he was wasted and passed out, it's likely that you were also wasted. It it just feels like uh like mean girl energy, you know, like pl- you're pledging a frat and you want to be the cool kid. So you're going to do something terrible to somebody else. That's a mean girl energy. It's awful. It's awful. Like, why? Why do... Why be mean? You know what I mean? Especially yeah. when you're especially to somebody who you're pledging a fucking fraternity with, Supposed which I to think be is brothers, which I think is stupid to begin with. I'm a, I'm a fraternity. <laughs> All right. Listen, <laughs> fucking losers. No offense, man. If any of our listeners are fraternity people, listen, all whatever, whatever is clever. But like, you know, that's the dumbest shit ever. Like, Omega, sick of dicka, whatever. I don't fucking <laughs> know. Like, you know, and then and then they're all like, like fucking, you know, like, oh, we're brothers, oh, we're brothers. OK, but then when they're doing the fraternity shit, they're fucking with these people so much where you're, you know, this guy's supposed to be your brother, but you're yeah. shaving off his fucking eyebrows. The right? hazing, the, fuck? the hazing feels like unnecessary. It feels like uh, like you have to like you're joining a gang like oh if you got to prove your loyalty to us by shooting somebody or you know t- it just feels very gang ish right. um dislike i never got into any of that stuff either personally like sororities or anything like that one because all of that estrogen just overwhelms me and i cannot <laughs> like i can i can do like three people around me tops and and mm. then i'm tapped out so right. all of that, like, ugh, just wasn't my jam. Um, but also like the the prove your loyalty to us, and then we'll be brothers forever. But that's yeah. not how it ever works out. It's just here, be terrible to other people to prove that you can join a a cult that is just terrible to other people all the time. But we drink, so and we have parties. <laughs> Yeah, we drink, we have parties. Yeah, we're the coolest. No, you're fucking losers, bro. Like, I'm sorry, man. Listen, when I was in college, I mean, I went to 13th grade, but you know, when, when, um, what do you call it? But I used to hang out at the other colleges and they used to think that I'd go there. And even though I was long haired guy or whatever, they'd still try to get me into the, these, what do you call it? Into these fraternities. Like, cause yeah. I used to hang out at Hofstra a lot and CW Post, but Hofstra is like a big, you know, it's a big, expensive college Mm -hmm. um you know a lot of attorneys come out of there and so forth so you got all these guys and just like you know i guess because i was around they must have thought that i went there and i was popular you know so you know maybe that was whatever the case may be i thought that was all the dumbest shit ever and i used to tell them that is the dumbest shit ever you know, well, like... don't get me wrong. I have been to some frat parties. I've been to lots and lots and lots of frat parties. I've had myself a good ass time at some frat parties and I've bedded some frat boys. But ill, <laughs> ill, ill. Oh, oh, my God. I was obsessed with this one guy and he was a raging alcoholic, like woke up at 9 a.m., pouring a bottle of Jack down his throat, raging alcoholic. Wow. Um, it's so, you know, that was some stuff that I had to work out through therapy, but <laughs> I was so obsessed with this guy. He got kicked out of college, but he was a frat boy. Uh, yeah, no, no good. Yeah. No good. No good. I'd rather, I, you know what? I'd rather sit at, on the, uh, you know, like, like the green at, at you know, and when I was in college, sitting in the green with the, with the girls in the music wing, you know what I mean? And sit and sing with them and hang mm-hmm. out with them and with the guitars and, you know what I mean? And just sit and hang out and just enjoy, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like going and doing stupid shit, like, you know, like shaving and I went off to, people's eyebrows. Yeah. And I went so to wild ass parties and you saw me when I was younger. I was pretty, yeah. you know what I mean? Like I, I had no issues with with going anywhere, or doing anything, or hanging out with anybody. I never got into the the issues with the quote unquote jocks because you know I knew how to fight. So, right. You know what I mean. So they didn't treat me like the uh, the regular metalheads. Mm-hmm. You know. Um. But I don't know, man. Um. I just I never I never understood the the. I feel the, like the you reasoning just kind behind of this. hit a point without even realizing that you were hitting a point, and that is this like hierarchy of 
what, you know, like the, the frat boys are here and then it's, you know, and the metal heads are down here. There's like right. these little, um, like, sub cults in the culture where it's like for whatever reason they've put frat boys fraternities and sororities at the top of this food chain and you're like wait 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 <laughs> right well be because they think in 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 the grand scheme of things the 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 whole point behind like frats and sororities are that these are wealthier people that are in the fraternities and the yeah. sororities yeah you know what i mean yeah. so they think that they're better than x y and z you know what yeah. i mean yeah. So, you know, oh boy. anyways, yeah, um, no, I see. I, yeah, you were an asshole for doing it. Please don't stop listening to the show. Yeah. <laughs> I hope that at this point you are a full grown adult with a fully developed frontal lobe and you are no longer shaving off your friend's eyebrows. <laughs> there you go. And and you know what? If you want to repent for it, go into the bathroom right now, grab your razor and shave your nope, own eyebrows nope, off. Nope. Don't 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 listen to that. If you would like shave to them repent. Off. If you would like to repent, <laughs> please go to Apple Podcasts and give us a five star rating and a nicely worded review. That is your penance. That's your penance. <laughs> and then go shave your eyebrows off. <laughs> and, and send then go us shave pictures. Your eyebrows. Send us pictures so we can post it on a, on our on our show. Um, <sighs> post it on uh, social media rather. Um, all right, Day, you're up next. All right, this one's a doozy, Brim. You're not gonna like it. Oh no. My best friend asked me to have a threesome with her and her husband. Oh, I agreed. Now agreed. I'm pregnant with his baby and we are working out how to handle this awkward situation. It looks like this baby will have two mommies, just not what people typically think two mommies are. Wow. Well, <laughs> uh, how do you feel, Brim? How do you feel? <laughs> I don't know what to think. Listen, I mean, sometimes I'm like, well, you know, to have a couple of wives wouldn't be so bad. I'm just kidding, Dana. I'm kidding, Dana. I'm kidding, hey, Dana. To each, to each their own, you know? Like, no. it's, it's, sometimes I want some sister wives too. I'm like, somebody go handle the dishes. Somebody go handle the laundry. Somebody go give my husband some sexual pleasure and let me go take a nap. So you don't have to do it. <laughs> That's so awful. Some sister wives. <laughs> Some sister wives. Uh, you know what? I've never, ever, I've always laughed at those situations. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I always think that it was like, how how are you going to ask somebody to come in and jump in with you and, and your, your husband? But I guess that's what floats their boat and that's what their, their thing is. But you would also think that they would have been wearing some kind of protection in that type of situation. Yeah. And, and the fact that that's not the case. And he dropped a load in her. And then she got pregnant. So we don't know if it's just one load or multiple loads. You know, she might he might have been doing laundry for quite some time. And uh, yeah. you know what I mean? And then how do you know that that's not the only time that it was done and she wasn't meeting with him behind the other one's back? You know, you don't know. Well, don't know. I mean, well, this is the friend that's writing in. So she said that she had a threesome with her best friend and her husband. So and now she's pregnant with his baby and they're and they're. And they're okay with it. And they're all going to be. So is they're she moving in? Parent. So is she moving in and they're going to be like, that's that. What, what the sister wives thing. Is that what's yeah. going to be? Oh, that'll be like an interesting conversation to have with your in-laws, right? Like, oh, so by the way, you have another grandchild. Well, I don't know if they have any other kids in this situation at all or not, but mm. here's your grandchild. Um, She's the mommy. <laughs> mommy number one. I'm going to be mommy number two. Uh, like, wow, that really ought to drum up some drama at Thanksgiving dinner. <clears throat> yeah. Well, look, so, so I have, I have a friend, I'm not going to say who they are, mm -hmm. um, but I do have a friend who did recently come out to me and tell me that, what do you call it? Um, he, he has a, uh, sister wife thing going on, um, oh. where he has, he has his wife and then he has now a second wife or Girlfriend that Girlfriend. the wife brought in or whatever it is. And what do you call it? And then they, um, the way they handle it is they, like, he takes turns of who he's, like, which days he's sleeping with who and whatever. And, you know, and, and uh, you know, and then the both women take care of all the kids together. And so, but their families were not, you know, when they said, all right, well, we're coming clean about this and we're moving together and they're moving in together. And so, like, yeah. their families did not, it did not go over well. 
Really? Did not, go, did not go over well. So what do you call it? So they, they actually stopped talking to them. Um, I am not shocked by that reaction. However, I yeah. do not understand it because for me, and I know a lot of people out there are nothing like me, but mm. for me, it's not my business. It's not my life. Like not my circus, not my monkeys. So right. you do what you want to do in your life. I don't get a choice over the matter. I don't have big feelings over the matter unless you're hurting somebody else. Why the fuck would I care if you want two wives, if everybody involved in there knows about it and is good with it and says that this is what I want? I don't have a big opinion. You do you, boo. I Yeah, I guess. Just so weird. Yeah. It's so weird. It's so weird. <laughs> Oh, I'm so sure weird. it would get some like taking, like getting used to. Um, like if my son came to me and was like, "Okay, I'm Polly, and I have you know two, three wives, whatever." I'm sure that it would take me some time to adjust and get used to it. Sure, but would I stop talking to him? No, of course not. I could barely handle one woman. Give me two, then three. Are you out of your mind? You just said two or three, three. Holy yeah. crap! I don't, yeah. I, I don't know. Listen, I w- not physically. I'm not even talk- physically. I'd be in perfect. Oh, specimen. yeah. No, no. I'd be having we that are much a sex. lot emotionally. But emotionally? <laughs> you kidding yeah. me? I don't how the hell would I? I don't know how I would handle that. It's hard yeah. to handle one. I know. I know. I can barely handle my damn self. So I get it. <laughs> I got I got the one. And then I got my work wives. I got you. I got Kim. You know uh-huh. what I mean? Like. You know, like hey, Meg is coming, starting to come up because you know, on on uh, within Brim Skin, you know, that's Alex's girlfriend. Uh-huh. So I'm just like, I'm like, son of a bitch, yeah. like I, you know, like all this estrogen. Yep, <laughs> yep. There's a lot. There's a it's lot. Okay. It's a lot to juggle. You got to keep could, those could balls be worse. in the air. <laughs> could be worse. Could be worse. What do you call it? Um. All right. So uh, yeah. So good luck. Good luck with the baby. Uh, you know, yeah. do, write us in. Let us know. Do you have a boy, a girl? We want to know. I'd love some follow up on that. If you want to answer any of the questions that we've posed, like, are you moving in? Is this going to be like a sister wife situation? Or is it like he just sees the baby on the weekends? Kind of like I I want to know all the details. Are you guys still getting it on? Are you, you know, like, yeah, um, I, I, I guess I want to know. Yeah. I mean, at least it's with her best yeah. friend. She already knows her, like how she is, who she is, what she's like. I mean, I guess that's a positive, maybe. Yeah. Hopefully. And and the husband obviously knows her now, you know. <laughs> Intimately. <laughs> and he knows, knows how to get her knocked up. Well, there you go. Oh, my God. Oy. Can you imagine, like, afterwards, if, if the guy was like, oh, that was a waste. Yeah, she was boring. Oh, boy. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah. Like, uh, by the way, <laughs> yeah, here, <laughs> this is yours. Oh, my Lord. Um, Okay. I'm next. Yes. Here we go. I keep having intense sex dreams about my ex. I have not a single desire to be back with him. He was abusive and toxic, but the sex was always mind blowing. I can't tell anyone because my family and friends hated him with good reason. Probably three times a month. I have an intense sex dream about him. Wow. Okay. Well, what I suggest is grab yourself a little toy, go into the other room, play with the kitten, make a purr, think about whatever you're going to think about, and let it be done with, and that's it. You know what I'm saying? Don't act Don't act on any of that. You don't need that extra BS in your life. You don't need the abuse. You don't need the toxicity in your city, if you know what Man, I'm saying. Man, it is kind of rude that... What did I do? I'm sorry. Not, not you. <laughs> oh, okay. Ooh. Let me finish. I, th- I thought that I was getting yelled at for a second. I was like, I'm getting yelled at. Dana's coming at me. When Dana's coming for me, I know I done did something bad. No, you didn't do anything bad. It's just kind of rude that like mind blowing sex comes from toxic relationships. Like, why is that a thing? It's upsetting that whenever you're in a toxic relationship, the sex is always just so, so good. Because that's all you because that's all you're thinking about because that's all you have to focus on. All right. Because yeah. I give I give mind blowing sex. Thank you very much. The fact of the matter is, is that what do you call it when you're in a shitty relationship and the relate because the relationship itself is shitty. The only thing that might be good out of it is getting and having sex. So yeah. what do you call it? So now that is what it, mentally you're thinking that everything was great. 
you know, in bed because that's the only positive time you had with the person. Uh-huh. So all you the gotta good make times, up. <laughs> you gotta all make the good up for times, all the shit. Right. Well, no, all the good times are 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 the times that you had in the sack. So yeah. there. So all of a sudden now that's mind blowing, but it really wasn't. All it was was probably inadequate sex. You know what I mean? You just don't know what it's like because you're not with somebody who actually loves you. See what yeah. I mean? Yeah. When you're with somebody that loves you and you're in love and you and you, you know what I mean? Look, I've had freaking, of course, you know, crazy freaking sex before. But when you're in love and you haven't, you know, the, the intimacy and that's mind blowing. If you haven't had that, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, There's a big a difference. difference between big like. Difference making love like mm-hmm. looking into somebody's eyes and kissing them and like really exploring each other and making love and mm-hmm. like getting fucking railed you know right like, right but you could difference. do but you and you could do both in the same in the same setting you know yeah. what i mean yeah. you could do both in the same setting just because you start off romantic doesn't mean you can't work your way into being uh-huh. rough and crazy and like knock you through the wall you know what i mean like i listen i've broken beds in my time you know what i'm saying you can ask danielle you know she'll yeah. tell you you know i've broken beds you know and and the, the fact of the matter is is when it's time to get you know passionate and so forth and that's all part of it that's mind-blowing when you can go back and forth and and have it work in a nice motion you know what i'm saying don't yeah. be mind-blowing with somebody who's a, a, a fucking you know, druggy or drunk or abusive or toxic. That's not that's just you thinking that it is simply because those were the only good times that you had. So curious, what is your take on her having these dreams? She says, well, I keep saying she if we don't know if it's a girl or a guy. But right. What what is your take on these dreams? Like her subconscious is going back to this person like three times a month that's interesting one it's probably fresh it's probably still fresh okay. she probably just just let it go with him probably just broke up with him yeah. um and you know what's the oldest story in the book with abused women abused women don't leave right they don't leave so and and what he called so she might be thinking of it because you know she didn't want to leave yeah does that make sense yeah, well, whatever is going on there, stay away from the toxic, abusive ex partner, and yeah. um, maybe, maybe try and lucid dream. <laughs> Here's me giving you advice. Maybe change his face into like a a celebrity. You can borrow mine, Jake Gyllenhaal. Just change it up into somebody's face. <laughs> lucid dream at somebody else if you're capable. At least use my face. This is our show. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Dana. Be like, use Brim's face. Use an Listen, older face, a better looking face. I, got I some do good not pictures want on your wife coming after me, okay? <laughs> she will kick my ass. <laughs> she doesn't care. No, she does care, actually. She'd she be like, cares. why are you looking at my man? Listen, listen. No, no, because I was at the event. Did I tell you about the woman who was like all touchy feely over me? did. And you she's just did. laughing in the background. She's like, ha, 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 well, ha, ha, ha. You know I'm what, like, Brim? yeah, okay. You know what we need to do right now is we need to wish your wife a very happy Uh, 40th birthday. Happy 40th birthday. Yes, she's 40 today at the the day that we're we're recording this. So, yes, happy birthday, dear. And uh, what do you call it? I'm sorry that, that we blew up how old you were on air. (laughs) <laughs> huh, I'm 41. I'm 41, girl. I own it. You own it, too. You look beautiful. You're stunning. I thought you were both 21 again. See? Yeah. See what I did there? <laughs> See? See? I got my girls. I got my girls. Aging is a it? privilege. Um, Aging is a privilege. Hitting 40 is amazing. And I hope you hit 41 and 50 and 60 and 70. I hope it just keeps going and you get to have a lot of future beautiful experiences, which I'm sure she will. You know what? She woke up this morning and she was actually perfectly happy about being 40. She yeah. was freaking out at first, you know, and then I think she was like, you know what? This is a good thing, you know, yes, like whatever. And thing. so it is what it is. The alternative um, is you're six feet under. So I'll I'll go with getting older, that's please. <laughs> that's this is true. It's very true. What do you call it? Um, so are we done with uh, the sex dreaming? By I, the way? I think so. I think we are. Send send us in send us in if you hear this now. I hope you are listening. Uh send us um 
a response just so we know i mean like what is it about it are we on point is that could that possibly be the reasoning yeah. behind feeling that way um and you know how how soon how, how soon is this you know after mm -hmm. You know, you guys have been broken up. I mean, it could be fresh. It could, you know, it could have been three years ago. Who knows? Right. I, yeah. No idea. Um, so, yeah, please follow us. Follow up with that. And uh, yeah, we'd appreciate it. Um, you're next. All right. Our last secret for a two year anniversary. Oh, we're two years old. Oh, gosh. Uh, my neighbor walks his dog every day and never picks up after it. <laughs> Several neighbors and myself have him on camera not picking up after the dog. We all gathered all the shit over a week or so and then dumped it on his front porch in the middle of the night with a note that said, we helped you pick up after your dog. Your turn. Wow. <laughs> He wow. doesn't he doesn't walk the dog in our direction anymore. So I guess he's the west side of the neighborhood's problem now. Oof. Uh, can you imagine? Oh. I feel like this is like a, a I, I don't know if we've had a secret like this one before, or maybe I just read stories about it or whatever, but I feel like this is a common occurrence. There's a dude in my neighborhood that walks his dog and doesn't pick up after it. And I have daydreamed of doing this exact thing of picking up all the shit and just dropping it on his doorstep, but I don't know where he lives. So <laughs> You follow him home, <laughs> follow him home, but that, make him think that you're a stalker. What do you call it? Uh... <laughs> but see, here's the thing. Like, if that was me, I wouldn't be a little bitch doing it at night. I would go in the middle of the day, you know what I mean? Just walk up, even if he, the guy's outside with the dog or outside doing the lawn or something, I'd go out there and dump it and watch him like, yeah, you see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here's your shit, motherfucker. I you returned know what I mean? your dog shit to you. I I see you left this uh, all across the neighborhood. So I wanted to re you know bring it back to you because mm -hmm. I figured you might be missing it. You know what I mean? You, know, you could use some fertilizer or something. You know it's, what I'm saying? Pick up after your dogs, man. That's yeah. messed up. That's so messed up. I think it's funny that they did it, but I think that it's this ridiculous that they, that they didn't do it during the daytime. Like, well, see, and I disagree with that for one reason. And because my brain always goes, you know, too pretty for prison. My brain always goes back to, can I get in trouble for this? like legally and so i feel like dumping a pile of shit on somebody's porch could be one it's trespassing two it could be like damaging property or whatever i'm sure it's a bunch of misdemeanors but still i wouldn't want that to happen so yeah i would use the cloak of night <laughs> to do my to do my evil doings well, if if you're like anybody else in, in the country, they, everybody has a ring now or the other ones and blah, blah, blah. So you, everybody's seeing what you're doing at their houses anyway. Um, what do you call it? So, yeah, that wouldn't make a difference if it was daytime or nighttime. But what do you call it in put terms of uh, <laughs> put, on a, just put on a mask? Uh, that wouldn't look weird in the middle of California. You know, where it's hot. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> But um, no, I would legit do it and, and I would wait so they could see me. If the cops came, I'd be like, I'm only returning what he left in front of mine and my friendly neighbor's houses. Uh, it's illegal for you to walk a dog and let them poop on the lawn and pick not pick it up. It is now now illegal to not pick up your dog's poop, which is why everybody's supposed to be picking it up. Yeah. So, you know, so who's at fault? He's at fault. Not not you. You're just giving yeah. it back. Just give you know it back. I mean? Just give it this back. This is yours. I'm returning this to you because I am a good neighbor and I just it's wanted not... to make sure that you got uh, what yeah. you fucking deserve. That's right. And, <laughs> <laughs> and it's not even it's not even it's not your fault that you know that you had some of your own human turds in there as well. I mean, you know, like how could you tell? You couldn't tell the difference. Dog poop, human poop, who knows? So, who knows so the what difference? That's what I'm talking about. Like a Rottweiler sized duty coming from you. I think that I works. I don't think anybody's going to DNA test it, to be honest. No, no. <laughs> we got and better things do, to do at the crime lab. And if they do, they'll find out that you're 100% that bitch. That's it. <laughs> Regardless. <laughs> see what I did there? Oh, you see that? Yeah. that anyway, was good. That was um, good. What do you call a shout out to Lizzo, by the way? Uh, 
who is what do you call it? It was in Tennessee. They they put out a new law. I don't know if you saw it. A new law about that, that people can't dress in drag um, in and anywhere in Tennessee. So Too what bad. do you call it? Yeah. So uh, she had a concert there, and she had a bunch of RuPaul's boys or girls, if you want to call them, um, come up on the stage and you know all in trans and. So what do you call it? Trying to prove a point. So anyway, awesome. guys, um, that's about all the time we have. <laughs> Happy we two year here. anniversary. Happy two years. I can't believe you waited on that to tell me. I can't believe it. That's crazy. That's great. Cra- you're crazy. So, crazy. so crazy. So crazy. Anyway, you guys are awesome. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for tuning in every single week. Please make sure to spread the news. We'd like to make sure that our, uh, little guest list gets filled and our club gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, what do you call it? Make sure you catch uh, Dana's new show on batting. Also, please make sure to catch the grindhouse radio 7 PM Eastern standard times on uh, everywhere. I heart and everywhere you can get everything else. And then that's, that's that. Uh, Dana, you want to tell everybody the last rule of dirty little secrets club? I would love to guys. The first rule of the Dirty Little Secrets Club is to tell everyone about the Dirty Little Secrets Club. Again, guys, we appreciate you. We love you. Mwah. See you guys next week. You think we want something from you? You got another thing coming.